Hi guys, it's John Ribs here, and today we're going to be talking about mid-game assaults. So we talked about early game assaults already, and I said that they were generally very strong. The one flaw I identified in early game assaults was that they struggled in long range engagements. They really needed to be up close to enemies and you could sort of get by with frag grenades, flashbangs and their art thrower, maybe slug shot, but it basically took a lot to make an assault a good soldier in a situation where you couldn't run forward in the early game. Um, in mid game, I think that assaults are somewhat stronger actually than they are in early game. I gave them an eight out of 10 for break or for alpha strike and a nine out of 10 for breakdowns, uh, both extremely high numbers. I think that assaults are insanely strong in the mid game and continue to get even stronger as you go into late game. These are soldiers who as XCOM gets more flexible, they pick up more mobility, more ability to kill enemies at long range and something like that. Assaults just sort of get untethered and just get to go do whatever the hell they want. And if you run forward and pull a ton of pods, it's easy enough to smoke grenade, aid protocol, hunker, fortify, all of a sudden your assault's completely fine. There are a ton of missions in this game which are just set up to be breakdown missions to begin with. Uh, retaliations, mini retaliations, are really good examples and assaults are just amazing in those missions assaults are so strong that extremely light or even very light guerrilla operations as you get into mid and late game can be treated as though all the enemies are just active from the start and you'll just like smash them all like you can just sort of stop worrying about playing patiently these soldiers are insanely insanely good and my rating of mid and late game perks on these trees is going to be very difficult because every perk is insane. They're all really, really good. I'm going to give them sort of reasonable, moderate to high ratings just so I can distinguish them from each other. And I'm going to try to explain to you why I like the ones that I like. But I think that some of these perks are just so strong that picking between them becomes a matter of how exactly the assault's going to fit into your overall strategy and what exactly your overall squad strategy is may differ slightly from mine and so you may end up with a different perk and that's completely fine and in fact in my campaigns I will build assaults differently depending on what's going on like if I go for exosuits I'm more inclined to build them for pure alpha striking if I'm not going for exosuits and I'm maybe a little bit slow on weapons as well, I'm going to build them for a little bit more damage to, you know, leverage the fact that they can get that 100% hidden crit shot and I want them to deal a little bit more damage with it. So maybe we go for rapid fire at a tech sergeant there. Stuff like that. You can, you can vary this build as we head into mid and late game just because all the perks are so insane that you just like you take them and then you use them and they're really really good no matter which ones you took pretty much so i'm gonna do my best to uh to explain why i take the ones that i typically take and also give you some ideas of what i'm looking for that might make me take other perks on my assaults looking at staff sergeant to begin with we have extra conditioning aggression and formidable um, right off the bat, Aggression's a very, very strong perk in general, but it's one that I usually dismiss because a laser sight plus close, close and personal is actually already capping your assault's crit, basically always. Um, aggression is something that would only really be exciting if we hadn't taken close and personal, and I don't recommend not taking close and personal, both because the other perks at Corporal are not as strong as it, and because um, extra conditioning and formidable are both insanely strong at staff sergeant, so we don't want to ever have to take aggression, really. Um, it is a good perk. I rated aggression a 4 out of 10 and 4 out of 10 for alpha and breakdown. So it's like, it's completely fine even on this tree, and I've rated it higher on other trees. But it just doesn't do anything that the assault needs at this point in the campaign. When we already have a good laser sight on a shotgun and we already have close and personal. The assault's just already maxing out on crit, so aggression doesn't do a whole lot. Extra conditioning reduces run guns cooldown by one turn. So that's a very simple effect. 
And basically what it does is in an extended fight, it lets your assault have an extra action every now and then. Um, it's a very nice thing to have, very useful for alpha striking, lets your assault basically be more mobile and kill more stuff. Um, combos nicely with Killer Instinct, which uh, gives you plus 50% critical damage for the turn when you activate Run and Gun. So uh, reducing the cooldown on Run and Gun by a turn is a pretty natural thing that you might want to do if you'd taken Killer Instinct at Sergeant. You can take extra conditioning at Staff Sergeant. I think I think it's a perfectly good perk. I rated it 6 out of 10 for Alpha Striking and 5 out of 10 for Breakdowns. Maybe it could even go higher. Like I said, I tried to sort of rate all of these perks a little bit lower so that I could distinguish them because I didn't want all of them to just be like, oh, this is 9 out of 10 and this is 9 out of 10. This is... <laughs> I mean, these are all very, very good perks. So I'm, I'm trying to distinguish them. Uh, formidable is my typical pick at Staff Sergeant. Uh, the extra two ablet of hit points are very nice and the 50% damage from explosives is wonderful on an assault. You are often going to be able to tank with assaults and you'll be able to bait explosives. They're going to be in positions which are great for that. Like if you put an assault sort of in the front lines and heavy cover and hunker and put another soldier near the assault, you're dealing with all of the incoming explosives, all of the incoming fire, and just making it so that your squad cannot be attacked, basically. And then next turn, your assault like turns on running gun and kills a guy just 100% of the time with no risk at all and no support required from anybody else. So I, I just love Formidable. A huge problem that assaults suffer in mid and late game is their wound timers. Because you start to run into missions where you're not as consistently alpha striking every enemy and you are getting shot at. And in this game, your like excess hit points which prevent wounds on you don't scale as well as enemy damage does. In Long War 1, you'd get like Titan armor and you had so many armor hit points that you basically never took wounds anymore. But in this game, you have very little in the way of excess hit points to prevent wounds. And so if you're taking any incoming fire, you're probably going to get wounded for a little bit. And Formidable just gives you a nice boost to your ablet of HP to keep your soldier healthy. Uh, I usually try to have lots of assaults in my rotation because I take wounds even with Formidable. But that's sort of the impetus behind it. This is a very strong soldier, and I want the strong soldier to be able to be deployed on lots of missions for me. And so I'm taking Formidable. And of course, the extra two hit points stops you from dying. The 50% reduction in explosive damage lets you bait explosives and feel pretty good about it sometimes. I've, I've talked about that in the past. So typically, typically happy to take Formidable. Uh, I said that was a 3 out of 10 for Alpha Striking, it doesn't really do any damage, and an 8 out of 10 for Breakdowns. It's a wonderful perk to have against incoming fire, of course. Tech Sergeant rank. Man alive. Hit and run, rapid fire, and close encounters. <laughs> what a choice, huh? Um, okay, so Hit and Run's my favorite perk in Long War 1, and not a favorite of mine in Long War 2, and I want to explain why. I gave it a 5 out of 10 only for Alpha Striking, and a 6 out of 10 for Breakdowns. Hit and Run requires that a target be flanked or exposed, and the problem is there are a lot of non-cover taking enemies in this game. Uh, mechs, drones, archons, sectopods, berserkers. These are not enemies that you can flank and not enemies which are exposed. And so, unless this has changed since the last time I used it, uh, hit and run just isn't actually that flexible in this game. Hit and run is useful against like snakes and advent troopers who you're able to expose or flank, but there are a couple of problems with that. In a lot of fights, you sort of spread horizontally, and the way that you expose enemies is to blow up their cover. And in that situation, sure, hit and run will proc, and you'll be able to shoot an enemy. But assaults really want to be able to run next to things so that they are in heavy cover relative to the rest of the enemies and shoot something. 
and that's a very different style of flanking enemies and it's it's not a situation where you really need to move afterward and it's often not a situation where it's that easy to guarantee that you're actually flanking the enemy like you may want to run to the other side of light cover from an enemy and then shoot it in the head um it's a situation where close encounters always works if you're running next to something so so the only way that you're really getting value out of hidden run that close encounters cannot give you is if you're like running around the flanks of enemies at a considerable range which is just an odd thing to do with an assault especially since we have close and personal we have a laser sight we have a shotgun there are so many reasons for us to be next to something or if we're clearing out cover of enemies entirely and then taking like a frontal shot at them from some distance hit and run will outperform close encounters but that's just not that's just not really what assaults are for. Uh, rangers, sharpshooters, gunners are all classes who can do that a lot better than an assault can do. So I try not to structure strategies around either of those roles for assaults. Um, and so much of the rest of the time, close encounters is just way better. Anytime a drone runs into your ranks, a mech runs into your ranks, if an archon's in your ranks, if a berserker's in your ranks, if you're running forward next to something, um, Close Encounters just does what Hit and Run wants to do, but it does it a little bit better. So that's why Hit and Run's only a 5 out of 10 for Alpha Strike and a 6 out of 10 for Breakdowns. Uh, let's talk about Close Encounters now since I was sort of talking about it then. I gave this a 6 out of 10 for Alpha Striking and an 8 out of 10 for Breakdowns. Man, I'm being really stingy with handing out the ratings here because that, that perk lets you shoot <laughs> an extra time in a turn. It's a very, very, very good perk. Um, the way that you often want to use close encounters is to run up next to something and shoot it in the head. And then this gives you a bonus action, right? Hold on. Let me make sure close encounters cannot be used. Yeah. So it says close encounters cannot be used on the same turn as run and gun, but you can use close encounters and then use run and gun afterward. I'm... Pretty much certain. So the way that you use this is you walk up to an enemy, use close encounters to shoot it, then you activate run and gun giving you another action which you can use to move next to another enemy and then shoot that enemy. Um, it's been a while since I went super crazy with assaults. You can also do some really crazy things with pistol perks with them because once you're starting to get a soldier who has this many actions if you add pistol perks with very nice action economy and add the fact that the soldier is getting right up in things' faces. Um, you can just add a ton of extra damage to them. So Close Encounters lets you do some pretty silly things, and while it seems like it claims that it doesn't work with Run and Gun, it's not really true. You can engineer ways to make this perk work with Run and Gun, and make it work with Command as well. You can command your assault to like dash, and then get your Close Encounters shots off, and then do all the rest of this stuff. Close Encounters is a perk which turns on when our assault is next to an enemy. And basically everything else about the assault also turns on when it is next to an enemy. So I really like this perk a lot. Rapid Fire at Tech Sergeant is more of a like an unsupported killer sort of choice. Um, it does what Close Encounters does but far 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 less flexibly uh, you get minus 15 aim penalty on the rapid fire you can't shoot two separate targets uh it's okay i don't know i gave it a 7 out of 10 for alpha striking and a 3 out of 10 for breakdowns because i think that if we are just shooting like a mech or something like that sure rapid fire is fine and it requires a little bit less support to work than close encounters maybe but when things are really just like going to crap i want to be able to shoot two different things with my assault i want to be able to get more action economy out of them and rapid fire doesn't quite allow me to do that so i'm typically taking close encounters on my assaults um 
that didn't really take too long to talk about because all of the perks are like they're also uniformly good and i i can't really break apart every single tiny thing that goes into making like this perk which let you shoot twice a turn in it is it how exactly is it better than this other perk which lets you shoot twice a turn or this other perk which also lets you shoot twice a turn it's really really hard to say everything about these i want to say that pistol perks and assaults are really great and you should look into that assaults are really great soldiers to support with officers with command with oscar mike things like that these are extremely strong single target damage dealers so a lot of the time in a campaign when you're just picking apart small groups of enemies assaults are going to excel in ways that no other class really can assaults become more awkward in large scale fights and that's why i have perks like fortify and formidable and lightning reflexes on my assault because I want the soldier to be able to operate as sort of a mid-range tank in situations where it can't really get in and fight stuff. And in a Long War II campaign, there are so many enemies that just run at you that in a situation like that, if your assault can tank for a turn or so, opportunities are going to present themselves for the assault to kill something. A zombie is going to walk next to it, a drone is going to fly next to it, a mech's going to be walking forward, a berserker is going to be walking forward, a stun lancer is going to come forward. There are just, just like 50% of the enemies in the game or something want to run at you. And so the general spirit of this assault build that you're looking at right now, all the way down the right side of the tree, is that I don't really want to have to work that hard to turn the assault on. The soldier is going to be great anytime combat goes longer than one round because enemies are going to just come to the soldier and die to it without me even having to work that hard. And the soldier is also great anytime that I do have to alpha strike because of the extreme strength of lightning reflexes, close and personal and close encounters, plus the laser sight on a shotgun with good base damage. Oh, and run and gun. This, this tree is so strong. So strong. So yeah, the only problems that I've ever run into with assaults in any of my campaigns have just been that they get wounded and then I don't have them and I have to try to pick up the slack with other classes who are uh, comparatively underwhelming to me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this mid-game assault review. I hope that I managed to shed some wisdom upon their build uh let me know how you use assaults i'd love to hear about it if you guys are having success with hit and run or finding that rapid fire is really good different difficulties i think play very differently and so if you're playing on like commander or veteran you may find that assaults function in a very different way and do so successfully and there's nothing wrong with that at all this is a sort of legend specific build, which is trying to let the AI trees move soldiers at you and die to you and just make things as easy as possible. And that's why I like it. And it works really well for me. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the late game Long War II Assault review. Bye guys.